Okay, it is Monday morning, January 9th, 2017, and I've got to share some things. Before I share anything, I want you guys to take a look at some of my favorite photos that I've made so far in 2017 in just the first seven days. <laughs> I wanted to give myself an exercise in the first seven days of the new year. So all of those photos that you just saw, every single one of those photos were shot, not with this, not with this, but with this, this Nikon D750. Every single one of those photos were shot with this camera, the 50 millimeter lens, and that's it. They were all digital. This is the camera I use for work, for weddings, engagements, families, uh, for video work, for this YouTube channel. This is my work camera. This is the tool that I use for work. All of these other cameras, primarily the Roloflex and the Leica, these are my cameras that I use for my personal work. These are the cameras that I am the most inspired by. They're the cameras that I use to document my daily life. And at the end of the day, they're just tools. I wanted to be able to practice what I preach a little bit because I started to feel a bit like a hypocrite whenever I would always be telling people, it doesn't matter what you shoot with, whether it's film or digital, it doesn't matter. A good photo is a good photo. And for me, any time I was shooting my daily life, my personal work, I wouldn't allow myself to shoot digital because I felt like I was cheating or I felt like it wasn't me or whatever the reason was, I just drilled it into my head that, you know, I have these film cameras, I should just use these. And that really made me start to feel like a hypocrite because all the time I'm telling people, it doesn't matter, you know, yeah, I shoot film, but I don't look at digital photographers or any digital photos and like turn my nose up at them. Uh, you know, I'm not a snob. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with that. And all of this kind of came about because uh, a few weeks ago, Molly and I watched a documentary called Minimalism and it's on Netflix. Uh, you've probably already seen it if you check out new documentaries when they're added to Netflix and it's been really been taking off a lot. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people post about this documentary and we checked it out and you know, I basically just started kind of reevaluating things in my life, uh, my possessions, the things I own, and uh, really just 
kind of cutting out the excess. And as I was going through my new office and I was basically getting rid of all kinds of different things, I noticed how much stuff came along with shooting film with, you know, all of my different film cameras, all of my film, all of my exposed film, all of my negatives in my binders, uh, all of my film scanning tools, uh, everything about it. There's just so much stuff involved. And, you know, I made a joke to uh, my good friend Kyle Miles and you know, he works for Leica and Leica DC, and he's been shooting a lot with the Leica M Monochrome, which is an all black and white digital camera. And, you know, I texted him and made a joke that, you know, I was jealous of him for shooting that camera because, you know, all of this stuff I had from shooting film, it was just, you know, overwhelming me based on that documentary I just watched, and I was trying to cut down on all of the things I had. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to stop shooting film, but it just made me think, like, I made the joke that I was jealous of him for shooting digital and not having to worry about it as if I wasn't allowed to do that. And I think I've placed some kind of pressure or expectation on myself that I'm a film photographer because of this YouTube channel from, you know, the stuff I share on social media. I get emails and messages all the time from people saying, you know, that I got them into shooting film. And that's an amazing feeling. It's awesome to know that I've gotten other people involved in something that I love personally. But it's placed this kind of restraint on myself, I think, that, you know, I'm not allowed to go outside of that. I'm not allowed to shoot digital because that's that's not what I do. I'm I'm a film photographer. And it's just it's completely in my own head. No one has told me that. It's just what I've kind of fabricated myself, and it was kind of driving me crazy because, I, again, I felt like a hypocrite. So I decided to set myself a goal or an exercise, uh, whatever you want to call it, basically just I'm not going to shoot any film for the first week of 2017. The only camera I was going to allow myself to use was the Nikon D750 and the 50 millimeter lens and that's it. I wasn't going to shoot anything else. And you know the the DSLR is sort of almost like the antichrist <laughs> to a lot of film photographers. You know that's like the ultimate evil on the other end of the spectrum and it's what a lot of film photographers are trying to get away from. Uh, and, you know, I, I personally, I've often told people it's, you know, it's a tool, but it's not a very inspiring tool. I don't, you know, really pick up this camera and feel inspired to go out and shoot or to, you know, want to carry this thing around all the time because it's not a huge camera. I mean, it's bigger than, you know, my M6 and it's just beefier and, you know, there's just a, a ton of buttons and dials on it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a tool. It's, that's all it is. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the most inspiring thing, but you're the photographer. It's not about the camera. And, um, you know, obviously with all of this, that's not to say that the D750, because it's digital, it's not a capable camera. Or that this is some cheap digital camera. That's not it at all, because this is a very nice, uh, you know, really, really capable camera. So it wasn't about setting a limitation on myself based on the camera, it was just the medium of shooting digitally and, you know, trying to practice what I preach a little bit. And so I carried that camera and that lens with me everywhere I went for the first seven days of 2017. I took it to the grocery store, I, you know, went out and drove down back roads and looked for photos, I shot it in our home, I, you know, used it for work like I always do. Um, I used that camera a lot and I shot a lot of photos and even at the end of the day, you know, I, I shot, I used that camera almost like a film camera. Um, I, you know, I tried to just ignore the fact that it was digital. I tried to just ignore everything about it and I tried to just use it as if it were a tool the same way that I use my film cameras. You know, I don't mess with settings and all that stuff because it's not there. So I just, I shoot with them and that's it. And I, I you know, I don't get too, uh, it, you know, too wrapped up in them and they, they don't really get in my way. I just, I use them as a tool and that's it. And that's the same thing I did with my D750. 
Now, it had some drawbacks, some things I didn't like while I was shooting it. You know, it's kind of, you know, a, a clunky, big kind of camera compared to what I'm used to anyway. Uh, you know, the shutter is much louder than the cameras I use. You know, both of these cameras here are pretty quiet. This one is much louder. And, uh, you know, there, there were obviously some things like that. I got a ton of looks. I, I, for the longest time, I always said, you know, the DSLR kind of, it, it attracts too much attention. And it had been so long since I'd carried a DSLR around as my daily camera, you know, probably at least five years at this point. And, you know, it had been a long time since I just carried one of those around as I was, you know, out running errands. And I totally, you know, I, I was reminded that that's absolutely true because everywhere I went, I got just blatant stares at my camera and then they'd look up at me and they'd look at the camera back and forth. And it felt like it was this really overly exaggerated kind of thing, but people legitimately noticed that camera because you know, it said an icon and it was a big DSLR, like what they're expecting pros to use. And it, it drew a lot of attention that I didn't like. So yeah, there were certain things, you know, in those seven days that I noticed about the camera that I wasn't crazy about, but I was still able to make photos that I was proud of. And that's exactly what the whole exercise was. I told myself, I'm gonna shoot with only this camera and no matter how I feel about it, I'm gonna use it as a tool and I'm gonna make photos that I'm proud of. Photos that I can say, I, I'm happy that I shot these photos. And that's exactly what I did. You know, those photos that I shared at the beginning of this video, as you were looking at them, you probably assumed that they were filmed because that's primarily what I shoot. Uh, with me shooting the Roloflex so much for the last two months, I've been shooting a ton of square and I've been starting to see things in square. So whenever I would shoot with my Nikon, I had the grid lines turned on in the viewfinder and, you know, I could see a square composition as I was looking through the viewfinder and I just basically shot it as if I was shooting a Roloflex. I composed things with the square grid and then whenever I brought them into Lightroom, I just them to how I saw it as I was shooting and you know just keeping that in mind like yeah this camera inspires me this Roloflex you know I see things in square unlike these other two cameras here and from shooting it for the last two months it's like I don't have to be holding this camera to see things in square I can see things in square without holding a camera at all you know if I see a photo I can compose things as if it were a square so yeah, this camera definitely inspires me and, you know, it makes me want to go out and shoot, but I can still shoot square images with this camera. You know, uh, people, people get really, really hung up on gear and, and, you know, I'm definitely guilty of that. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I did a video called Simplifying Your Gear and in that video, I basically slimmed everything down to my M6 and it was an exercise that I was wanting to do, not for anybody else, just for myself and just to you know, see what happens if I shoot only just one camera. And, you know, I, I sold all my other equipment and it was my only camera for about six months. You know, I still had my Nikon that I used for work, but my daily camera was an M6 and a 35 millimeter lens. And that was the only camera for about six months. But then I, you know, was basically done with that and I started buying more cameras again and people were up in arms and I still get comments on that video to this day and comments about that video to this day. People saying, well, you just, you know, you got a Roloflex now. I thought you were simplifying your gear. I got a comment from someone saying, you made a video about simplifying your gear, but now you own more than just that camera. I think you owe us an explanation. And that made me laugh because how entitled can you be? <laughs> Uh, to demand an explanation out of somebody, but that's the kind of stuff that I think has caused me to have this kind of expectation or this pressure that like I, I can only shoot what is going to make other people happy. I can I, I have to shoot this because you know that's what they're expecting of me, and it's like this just bizarre thing that's gotten into my head that I am totally letting go of. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make photos that I'm proud of regardless of what I make them with. And I need to make photos for myself more than anybody. Being able to let go of those kind of expectations and just shoot what I want to shoot 
it's great. It's freeing for me to just not have to worry about it. It was freeing for me to only have this camera for one week. I didn't have to think about how much film I was bringing, which camera I was gonna bring, did I have this, did I have that? I literally just carried this over my shoulder for a week and that was it. I didn't have to worry about anything else and I didn't have to worry about choices and it was really, really freeing. And it was something I actually had a lot of fun with. And you know, obviously, does that mean I'm gonna stop shooting film? No, I love shooting film. I'm still gonna shoot film probably, you know, all the time. But if I feel like shooting digital, I'm gonna allow myself to do that because it doesn't matter. A good photo is a good photo and people can argue all day long about the pros and cons and I don't care. I have avoided that conversation countless times. I've told people over and over, it doesn't matter what you shoot with. And for me to be able to say that, but feel like I can't shoot digital myself and I have to only shoot film because that's what people are expecting of me, it's just ridiculous. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this video are thinking, well, I wouldn't care what he shoots with. And that's the whole point, you know, the, the idea that it's, it's this thing that I've made up in my head that I have to please other people with my photography and how I shoot, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, for me, being able to just let go of that, that's a huge thing. And, you know, like I said, this doesn't mean I'm going to stop shooting film, obviously. I love these two cameras, but I've, especially after watching that documentary, um, you know, I've given away and sold a lot of my own possessions in all different things in my life and also in photography as well. I've sold all of my film cameras except for these two. I have one pinhole camera that I'm going to be doing a video on that was sent to me and uh, you know I, I still have that one but everything else it's gone. You know I have my Minolta that I don't use anymore it was just my first camera and I keep it you know because it was my first camera and that's it. Everything else is is gone so it's just these two cameras now. So yeah I've been able to slim things down but you know it's for me, it's not for anybody else. And, you know, for me to make this video uh, and, and share my experience with this camera, it's just to basically get people thinking because, you know, like I said, I'm sure at the beginning of this video, you probably thought, oh, that's a lot of, uh, you know, film photos that he's sharing. And all of them were digital. And if you liked the photos before, and then I told you they were digital, and now you don't like them, that's pretty sad because it's all about the photo. It doesn't matter what it was shot with. And that's what I'm trying to like push people and, and get them to realize that a good photo is a good photo. If these are tools, you wanna have the right tool for the job. And you know, I feel like some of these photos that I got, if I were shooting film, I wouldn't have those photos. And, and that's made me question a lot like, Everything I love about these cameras is great, but what about them gets in the way? What about them is, you know, causing me to miss photos, to not be able to get the photos I want? And that's been something I've been thinking about a lot and realizing that, yeah, I can shoot them for certain things, but I don't have to shoot them for everything. And, you know, photos in really, really low light inside our house where I was shooting at ISO 3200 and being able to have a shutter speed that was actually, you know, capable and, and having autofocus to go with it. And it's just, there's a lot of different things that go into shooting with a digital camera that were really appealing to me because it, what, it didn't matter what it was like, the shooting experience of it. What mattered was that I was getting the photo that I wanted. I was getting a photo that now I have printed and hung up on our wall and it's something that I cherish, you know. So there's been a lot of just, you know, kind of introspective things. And this whole video basically has just been me ranting and getting my thoughts out. And that's fine. You know, you might hate this video. You might get nothing from this video or it might be something. And, and that's all I can do is just put out there what I can and hope that other people will get something out of it. So, you know, if you've made it to this part of the video, that's great, but I have a feeling a lot of people have probably already shut this off, but, but that's fine. And that's, that's what I'm, you know, accepting, especially this year is just that I, I, I'm not going to please everybody. I don't need to please everybody. I just need to do what I feel is best for myself and shoot what I can shoot to, to make myself happy, to make good photos that I'm actually proud of. 
And, you know, that's it. That's, that's really all there is to it. You know, one of the funny things about all of this was that I decided that, you know, on Instagram, I share a lot of photos there and I would always, you know, use hashtags on what camera and what film I used. And so that way people could always know what it was shot with. And I decided that I was just going to stop doing that because I felt like I was, you know, doing a good thing by letting people know what it was shot with so that way they could see and, you know, just click on the hashtag and see other images shot with that camera or with that film. And that was why I do that and uh, or why I did that because all this entire week, you know, during this whole exercise, I stopped doing that and I just let the photos be it. I didn't, you know, if I put a caption, it was nothing about what camera I used. Uh, a couple of people had asked what I used and I didn't answer because I got a lot of comments about like, oh, this looks like, you know, HP5 pushed. Is that what you used? Or, oh, I'm assuming this was with the Roloflex or, there were all these things. Uh, there was a, a some Instagram account that you know, it's called On Film, I think, and they only share film photography. And they went through and liked every single photo. And it's like, you don't know that it was shot with film. And if that's the only reason that you like the photo, then you're missing the point, you know. And and I was you know hung up in that at one point it was like oh, it's, it's a film photo, so it's a good photo because it was shot with film. And that's not it at all. And, and that's the only reason I'm sharing all of this. It's just because it's made me think a lot. It's made me laugh a lot. So for me to, you know, wrap all of this up and, and give you a takeaway point and, you know, put a nice little bow on it and give it to you, there's no way of me doing that. Uh, this video doesn't have a specific message in mind that I'm trying to give you other than maybe it doesn't matter what you shoot with and a good photo is a good photo. That's it. But, um, you know, all of this stuff, it's just all been in my mind for the last week. Uh, this was a really fun exercise for me because I learned a lot. I thought a lot. I was writing every single day, every thought that came into mind about this particular subject. And uh, I really just wanted to get this out there. Hopefully it'll be, you know, of some interest to somebody or it'll, it'll at least get other people thinking. And, uh, you know, I just, I felt like I needed to get it off my chest and say it out loud just for my own, you know, well-being. So uh, that's it for this video. There was no real message other than, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you shoot with. A good photo is a good photo. So if there's any takeaway that you're looking for, just let it be that. So if you guys have any questions or comments, I'm sure you have, you know, plenty of things to say. Let's hear it in the comments and more videos on the way. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the Roloflex 2.8F review that I did a few days ago. It's one of my favorite cameras. I've had a lot of fun with that and I'm excited that you guys, you know, enjoyed that video as well. So that's it for today, guys. So thank you as always and I'll see you guys next time.